The very first synthesizer we're going to start off with is Native Instruments Razor. Now initially I thought we were going to do most of our sound design in Massive, and we still will do some sound design in Massive, but Massive is a much more expensive and much more complicated synthesizer than Razor. Razor is only about 79 bucks on the Native Instruments site, and it's a really fresh sounding synthesizer. It uses a technique called additive synthesis to be able to create sounds that I'm really, really digging at the moment. And so the very first bass sound we're going to create, we are going to do in Native Instruments Razor. So we're going to go to base one, and this is why it's important to have these base channels set up, it just saves us some time. And we'll go up into our VST instruments. And Native Instruments Razor runs inside of Reactor. So we're going to grab Reactor. Now, if you do want to buy Razor, you don't have to buy Reactor. It actually will play in the free rate or the free Reactor player. But I have the full version of Reactor, so that's what I'm using here. So here's Razor, and we're just going to load it up. So when Razor first loads, it loads with this big cinema patch, which sounds like this. But we want a fresh slot to be able to start creating a brand new patch from the ground up in. So we're going to click up here, we're going to go into Aerosmith and the initial patch right here, which is basically going to wipe Razor clean and give us a fresh slate. The reason why I like to do this is because I like to have very signature bass sounds in my track. And so I like to have bass sounds that aren't really built on presets, that are built from the ground up and sound really, really fresh and unique to the track. The very first thing we need to make sure is that we are in mono mode. Mono mode means it's only going to play one pitch at a time because bass, we're not going to be playing chords. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to take the pitch and we're going to drop it down by 12 semitones. And that's going to put it into the bass range for us. So that's what it sounds like. It's got this standard oscillator, which is pulse to saw. And we are going to start modifying things in here. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick the oscillator. We're going to click in here and this gives us a variety of oscillators to choose from. And the one we're going to start off with is the formant oscillator. And we can scroll through here and pick different types of formants. Okay, that's going to be our starting point. Now, on the bottom is where we have envelopes. This is our volume envelope. You can see if we change the sustain level, that's going to change the output volume of Razor. But we have envelope number two and envelope number three that can be used for other things. So I want to have a envelope shaping the format knob right here. So give it that kind of sound. So how we do that is we have two modulation slots right at the bottom. I click on the little horizontal line right here. I click that and it gives me my modulation sources for this modulation destination. And what I'm going to choose is envelope two right here. Then I can click in this little semicircle and I can have that determine how much I want this parameter to move based on the envelope. So I'm going to click, drag down. And you can see this dark gray line appear. And then you can see it actually modulating the parameter up here based on the envelope. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sustain level all the way to the top. And I basically just want to use the attack parameter to have this kind of spread up as we play the note. So I'm going to back off the attack. Yeah, right around there. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a filter. I like to start off with the low pass filter. You can see it's already engaged right here. And maybe I'll just stop here for a second and explain a little bit about what additive synthesis is. Additive synthesis is a combination of a bunch of sine waves over the frequency spectrum, and you basically are having volume control over them. 
So in this particular synthesizer, you can see visually, there's 360 little tiny sine waves that are spread out over the entire frequency range, and the various different types of effects and filters are controlling the amplitude of those little sine waves. And so, for example, the low-pass filter, what it's doing, you can see here when I back the cutoff down, it's accentuating the amplitude of these sine waves and attenuating the amplitude of these ones to give a low-pass filter type of effect. Same thing with the spatial effects. We can put in over here like a, a reverb, just do a standard reverb. And what this is doing is it's not actually a reverb, it's kind of a simulated reverb. And what it's doing is it's just playing with the little partials, the individual sine waves. After the initial notes played and the MIDI off note happens, it's actually just reducing the sine waves in amplitude and extending them on. And I just find that this synthesizer has a particular sound to it that's relatively unique and fresh. And I happen to like this as an alternative to some of the other synthesizers I've been using. I find I can get very unique sounds out of it. Okay, so we're going to take the filter. And what I want to do is I want to add an envelope to the filter as well. So I'm going to take the cutoff. I'm going to back it off here. So we're just getting bass. You can hear that, just sub bass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the slot right here, click on it. I'm going to go envelope two. And I'm going to click and drag up so you can see the gray line go all the way up to the top. So we're simultaneously modulating with the envelope, the formant, position, and the cutoff of the filter. Now the filter also had a, has a couple of other parameters here. We've got width, just kind of the fatness of the filter. That's a bit more narrow, you can see right here, versus this. I like the sound of the wider filter, just gives me a bit of a fatter sound. And then boost is kind of like resonance. It controls how much of a peak we get here. And we can actually go negative values. You can see right here. So I'm going to go with the boost right around there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to enable key tracking. You see on the cutoff of the filter, I actually have three modulation slots. I'm going to click here, click on key track click and drag up. Not a ton, just a bit. And what this means is as I play higher up on the keyboard, it's actually going to move the filter position up. So the synth is going to sound brighter when I play higher notes. Okay, so a little bit of key tracking. Next up, we're going to add in a second filter. We're going to enable this guy. By default, it's a comb, but we're going to go here and we're actually going to pick the band reject filter. And we're going to change the cutoff position. Change the boost. You can see here we have the ability to select filter 1 or filter 2 for the graphical display up here. So we're going to look at filter 2 and what it's doing right now. You can see that's boosting. That's cutting. So we want to be yeah, right around here. Change the bandwidth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some key tracking to this filter as well. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to go key track. I'm going to key track this filter up as well. And in the second slot, I'm going to take envelope 2 as well. So I'm going to have envelope 2 modulating the cutoff position of this filter. I'm going to change the slope of the filter. You can see the slope is now giving it a nice notch. I'm going to take slope all the way to the bottom. So you can hear the filter a lot more moving through the sound. Then I'm going to change the boost bandwidth. You can see like the low pass filter, it's changing the shape. Kind of the width of the resonance peak. 
That's kind of nasally and thin sounding. That's a bit fatter. Yeah, I like it around there. So this is the foundation of our sound. Now we're going to move over into the LFO. So LFO is a low frequency oscillator. And we covered a little bit in our last live session about what LFOs do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the LFO modulate the filter cutoff of this guy as well, but just to a relatively minor amount. So the LFO here, first of all, you can have it beat synced by going like this, or you can have it unsynced and just have it in hertz like that. I'm going to leave it unsynced. Uh, the waveforms also you can change like this to various different waveforms. So I'm going to leave it as a sine wave. I just want it as a standard sine wave. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go modulator LFO1. And I'm going to click and just give it a little bit downwards. So you can hear that quite a bit. I'm just going to back this off. Yeah, I don't want it happening too much. Way too much. I just want a little bit of a wobble in it. Yeah, I like that. All right, next up, we're going to grab a spatial effect on it. And if we click here, we have the ability to choose from a variety of different things. I'm not going to use stereo spread. This is a base patch. But I am going to use this one right here, unisono noise. We have to turn it on to activate it. And here's what this sounds like. It makes it sound way wider. Take the amount down a little bit. And I'm going to take the LFO. I'm going to map LFO1 to the speed of the unisono noise as well. Just to give it a little bit more movement. Excellent. Okay, next we're going to go over here and we have some dynamic and saturation and distortion control. It's got these ver various different effects here that are kind of combined. We have a, a compressor, which is a straight up compressor. We have a limiter, but it's called a dirty limiter because we have the ability to add in some distortion to it. We have a clipped compressor, which is kind of like a dirty compressor. It's adding in some limiting or some saturation in addition, or some clipping and some saturation. We have a straight up saturator, and we have a clipper, which is going to be a harder effect. In this case, I'm going to use the dirty limiter. I'm going to turn it on. Turn the drive down. That's pretty nasty. Now we're going to add some other effects in the chain after this, like some other distortion module. So I'm not going to go too crazy on the drive here with the limiter. Good. I like it right around there. Lastly, we're going to go up here to Spectral Clip. And what Spectral Clip does is Razor has the tendency to be able to get really, really ear piercing in the high end. All the little upper partials when we start adding in effects and filters and boosts and things like that. They can get very aggressive up top. You can actually see the waveform right here. And what Spectral Clip will do is act like a EQ that's going to cut off some of the high frequencies. Just watch what it does. So it's cutting off everything from this line forwards in a slope. This controls the frequency of the cutoff. And because this is a bass patch, we don't need tons and tons of high frequency content. Good. And then we have safe bass down here. And what safe bass is, is as you go through and you filter things and you're adding in effects, it is possible to lose some of the bottom end of your patch. And so what safe bass is, is it basically is a sub oscillator almost. 
serves the same function. It basically adds in a sub base layer that bypasses the filters and things like that in the synth. We can turn it on like this. We basically have slope, which is going to control frequency. We have the level and amount. So that's a higher frequency, lower frequency. You have to be careful with the safe bass because you can really muddy up the low end of your mix with this if you're not careful with it. So actually for the time being, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it off and I may choose to slap it in later on if I feel like our bass is lacking. But for now, I'm just going to leave this patch as is. So that's the foundation of our razor patch. And what I'm going to do now that we've got this kind of loosely dialed in, is we're going to click up here, we're going to go file, we're going to go save preset as and we are going to call this Audio Weapons Base. Give myself the name as the author and click Save. And that way, if we ever want to load the patch in the future, we can. <laughs>